Oscar Out Loud is a weekly podcast about San Francisco real estate from the Jackson Fuller team, San Francisco realtors since 2002. Show notes with links are at jacksonfuller.com. Another defect in title can be a mechanics lien. Um, Wait, houses come with mechanics? Not They usually don't come with a mechanic. So, so um, I always think auto mechanic when I hear mechanics lien, which is I know. why this confuses me. I know. But explain a mechanics lien. So a mechanics lien um, would be, say, you are remodeling your house and you um, you don't pay your contractor. The co- what? Well, not you. People have disputes with their contractors. And then your contractor um, files a lien against your property um, saying that you owe him or her $50,000. And then if you go to sell the property, you know, chances are that contractor is going to sue you to try to get his or her money. But say you go to sell the property and there's this mechanics lien, you'll have to pay that lien off before you can transfer title to the property. Because the title insurance company, the title and escrow company will not actually record the deed and grant title to the new owner without clearing everything. And sometimes we see, you know, you can tell when people are and financially in a bad way because it's like, oh, they owe $40,000 in child support and they haven't paid their garbage bill for three years and they haven't paid their PG&E bill and they haven't paid their water bill and they haven't paid their taxes and so property taxes, IRS taxes. You're talking about clearing all of these things that are just coming out of your mouth, like a, a river of, of magic knowledge. Like, how do we know what needs to happen? Like, like how, how do you know what needs cleared or what is there or, or any of these pieces? How does this even begin to be digested? So when you get a preliminary title report, when you go into contract on a house, one of the documents that you will get shortly thereafter, if you haven't already, in a pre-sale disclosure package, is a preliminary title report. And that shows everything that is recorded against the property in the public records, like mechanics liens, like... Um, well, say it's, it's supposed to show everything. It's supposed to show everything. <laughs> and uh, that'll look for a condo. There'll be CCNRs. There'll be the existing owner's mortgage, if there is one. There'll be the existing owner's uh, property tax bill. Um, there's a note that any supplemental taxes will have to be paid. And so one way I described these, the, and the, all of those things that are recorded against the property are called exceptions. And think of those in terms of health insurance, those would be pre-existing conditions that your insurance isn't going to cover. So you're buying a condo. There's a um, document called the CCNRs, the Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions. That's going to remain on the title report um, as an exception to the policy. And so you can't come back and say, I didn't know that I had to pay HOA dues and I couldn't have um, a Velociraptor as a pet. Um, and so that was my number one search priority was someplace I could raise my Velociraptor. I know. And so I am absolutely suing because, you know, these CCNRs on title restrict my rights to raise dinosaurs. Yep. Um, how's that one going to fly? It's not. (laughs) You would lose because it was on the title report. You accepted title subject to... The existence of the CCNRs. They, the title company will tell you on your closing documents, okay, we're going to clear and clear by, by saying clear, I mean remove. Um, we're going to magically take away your pre-existing conditions. If only health insurance could do that, that right? <laughs> um, but they'll take away the mortgage. The, I mean, the, and by the mortgage, I mean the existing owner's mortgage. They'll take away the existing owner. Like if they have any unpaid bills, child support, taxes, um, garbage bills, any of that stuff that may have been recorded. But they'll replace. You know, you're getting a mortgage. Your mortgage goes on in place of the seller's mortgage. And you ha- you have been delivered what's called clean title. There's no defects in the in the title. You have... You own the property. If it's a condo, it's subject to the CCNRs, condo map, all that stuff. And then if anyone comes and slaps a mechanics lien on you, or say the person you bought it from didn't pay their contractor, and then they sold the property like a month later, and then the contractor says, well, I'm going to try, now now I'm going to try to put a mechanics lien on, they wouldn't be able to because... Well, the person that owes them the money isn't the owner anymore, but your well, your title insurance policy would protect you from that. Depending on which title insurance policy you bought, one of them doesn't. The Alpha Standard does not insure against mechanics lien, but the residential and homeowner policies do. 
Did you know? From a past owner? From mechanics liens. How is But I mean, at this point, everyone that goes through the sale essentially signs an affidavit. Like the sellers always end up signing right. something saying, you know, under penalty of perjury, there, there are none, nothing that about to be recorded. Right. You know, we didn't forget to mention anything. Yeah. They always ask you if you've done work on the house in the last three months and if you have any unpaid bills. And so, so this, this title insurance sounds pretty magical. How much does it cost me every month? You pay it when you close and that's it. And then it lasts. Again, the lender policy lasts for as long as you have the loan. Your owner's policy lasts for as long as you own the property. Does it always work out like that? Well, that's the term of ownership. <laughs> I mean, I mean the magical part. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> we had a client buy some land where we saw in the title report that there was um, the sellers had done some grading work without permits. You know what, Bren? You're an A. An A? I just graded you. Why? Oh, different grading work. Grading. I had absolutely no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> what? Like, let's just, they were, they were, it was raw land and they were out like re landscaping it, you know, like moving massive mounds of dirt, you know, changing the, the structure and shape of the land. So we weren't going to be able to close with it. And there was a, um, I don't know if I can't remember if it was an abatement or um, like a, this a, a defect on title. Yeah. That it was about that issue because the County discovered it and um, said, you need to, you know, get permits and fix this. And they said, well, the previous owner had done it and they, and then the listing agent said, Hey, this has been removed. And the, and then the, the escrow officer said, yep, it's all cleared. And so we said, great, that's awesome. You know, there was something and and then it reared its ugly head again. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think it was, it was, it was BS because the title company cleared it. And then the county came back and said, this never should have been removed. And yeah, that was bad. And since we thought it never should have been removed, it wasn't removed as far as we're concerned. And thus begin the argument with the title company. Yeah. I, I guess if I have to talk about the flip side of this, it's that at the end of the day, title insurance is insurance. And insurance companies make money by, not by making more in uh, revenues from all of their policies than they pay in claims. Right. So while they will tell you how excited they are to be with you for the life of your home ownership journey, when you actually give them a ring to ask for assistance, we have yet to see a title insurance company act like anything other than an insurance company. Well, that one in Glen Park with the utility easement, um, that one apparently they paid the old lady back who had bought her house. Right. Because but, and, like in, in anyone we've been involved in or have direct knowledge of, we have, have yet to see a, a title insurance company be anything other than an insurance company. Right. Um, we haven't, is, we haven't had, we haven't had a whole lot of people need to rely on their title insurance policies though. Too. But that actually brings up a great other, uh, criticism of title insurance, which is, do you even need it? Like, like if a, a house has been, you know, legally sold six times in the last 50 years and public record, really? Why, why do you need it? Um, that's, that's kind of this other criticism, which comes back to the point of, you know, in all of our years of having clients buy title insurance, the number of times it appears to actually have been needed you know, incredibly low. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's insurance. You hope you don't need it. And when we have car insurance, because we are required by law to have it, we have homeowners insurance because, well, we'd have homeowners insurance anyway, but the lender requires it. And the lender requires that you have title insurance. Do you think these other forms of insurance, like auto insurance, health insurance, because they insure something that is actually physical, you can touch, you see experience, it it makes more sense versus kind of insurance against legal risks, which is essentially what title insurance is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, it's been this way for so long and, and it's required by lenders. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it, it has, I have heard not through any of our clients, but I have heard of, um, 
times when title insurance pays out, you know, but it's, it's not, it does probably feel less tangible. Yeah. Well, the other situation that I'm thinking of where we had clients tangle with, with escrow and title or perhaps me was the, the house where the escrow lasted for years. Oh, and it started at one title company and you know, that was the title company that the seller had pre-selected and it was a, a property that had been flipped. And as we began to ask questions of answers we received during that transaction, things started to pop up that would be title issues. And as I started talking to the title company about them, they declined to offer coverage. Right. <laughs> or what they would offer was essentially like the most stripped down level that, you know, didn't address any of, of the issues that were of concern for this particular property. So then it became moving it, talking to other title companies to see if they would even insure the property. And, and we did end up, you know, moving it to a different title company that would, but even then, Thank God we didn't, one. I mean, because that escrow ended up never closing, but it was kind of this instance where um, as soon as the, <laughs> once again, as soon as the insurance company got wind of pre-existing conditions that were outside of their, you know, normal range of underwriting, like deal was off, you yeah. know, it was a high risk patient. <laughs> So I guess, you know, there's a part of me that absolutely believes in the value and in importance of title insurance, but there's also a part of me that can't help but be a little skeptical and cynical about insurance companies in general. I hear you. How much does this cost? It's based on the purchase price of the home. Both policies? The lender policy is based on the amount of the loan. Nice. So who pays them? The buyer in San Francisco. It varies by market, but here... The buyer pays both. Everything is negotiable, but I've never seen anyone negotiate that in our market. You know, they just vary by local custom. Exactly. Go, go across a bridge and it's different. Yep. Why? Because. <laughs> well, I think we've covered title insurance. Happy I'll endorse work. that policy. <laughs> Fabulous. Ding, ding. Escrow Out Loud is a weekly podcast about San Francisco real estate from the Jackson Fuller team. San Francisco Realtors since 2002. Show notes with links are at jacksonfuller.com. 